What's going on, nurses? Let's learn ECG. In this series of videos, you will learn how to interpret ECG and it is made easy and detailed for you. So please complete all the videos and you will be competent in reading ECG. Alright? ECG or AKG plays a crucial role in helping to diagnose, follow up, and detect any abnormalities in patient's condition. We nurses are usually the first to conduct an ECG and therefore, we need to know how to interpret them. A failure to detect abnormalities means that physicians will not be notified which will affect patient's care. That is a long introduction. Alright, so without further ado, let's move on to our topic. What is an ECG or EKG? ECG is the abbreviated term for an electrocardiogram. It is used to record electrical activity of the heart from different angles to both identify and locate any problem. This is an example of an ECG graph paper. In order for us to interpret ECG, we must know the components of an ECG paper, and it is essential. This paper is standardized across most hospitals and it has certain essential characteristics for the correct reading of the EKG. The electrocardiogram paper is a graph paper where for every five small squares or box, you can find a heavier line forming a larger square. One big box is equal to 25 small boxes. One small box is equivalent to one millimeter. Therefore, one big box is equal to five millimeter by five millimeter in size. The horizontal plane of the paper tells you the time, uh, the time in seconds or, or milliseconds. Each small box, which is one millimeter in size, are equal to 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds. A one large box, which is 5 mm, is equal to 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds. It is composed of 5 small boxes. Therefore, 5 big boxes are equal to 1 second. The vertical plane of the paper tells you the voltage. Each small box is equivalent to 0.1 millivolt. Therefore, one big box is equal to 0.5 millivolt. At the beginning of the electrocardiogram recording, the electrocardiogram automatically performs a calibration. This structure here will let us know what is the calibration of the ECG. On a standard EKG, the paper speed is 25 mm per second. Therefore, a standard ECG paper is 10 mm, 1 millivolt, and 0.2 seconds wide, meaning it is composed of two big boxes vertically. If needed, we can increase paper speed to see wave abnormalities or decrease it when QRS complexes are too large. A half standard ECG will look like this. And this one is the double standard ECG. And uh, this, this is the normal speed and this one is the double speed. All right, now let's examine the normal ECG components. But before that, you need to know the cardiac conduction system of the heart. Cardiac conduction system is analogy of the central heating system, the pump, pipes, and radiators, and they are of no use unless connected to a power supply. The pump needs an electricity to work, right? The human heart has a similar need for a power source and also uses electricity. Thankfully, we don't need to plug ourselves into the mains. The heart can create its electrical impulses and control the route the impulses take via a specialized conduction pathway. This pathway is made up of five elements. The sinoatrial node or the SA node, the atrioventricular node, the bundle of His, the left and the right bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. 
The sinoatrial node or SA node is located here in the right atrium near the entrance of the superior vena cava. This is the natural pacemaker of the heart. This is where all heartbeat started and it determines the heart rate. Electrical impulses from the SA node spread throughout both atria and stimulate them to contract. The atrioventricular node or AV node is located on this side of the right atrium near the AV valve. The AV node serves as an electrical gateway to the ventricles. It delays the passage of electrical impulses to the ventricles. Because of this delay, the atria will be able to eject all the blood into the ventricles before the ventricles contract. And then the AV node passes the signals onto the bundle of His. This bundle is then divided into right and left bundle branches which conduct the impulses toward the apex of the heart. The signals are then passed onto Purkinje fibers, turning upward and spreading throughout the ventricles myocardium. This electrical activity of the heart is the one we are recording using the ECG or EKG machine. Alright? Now, a normal ECG contains waves, intervals, segment, and one complex. The wave on the ECG is a positive or negative deflection from the baseline that indicates a specific electrical event. The waves on the ECG include the P wave, Q wave, R wave, S wave, P wave, and U wave. The interval is the time between two specific ECG events. The intervals commonly measured on an ECG include the PR interval, QRS interval, also called QRS duration, QT interval, and RR interval. The segment is the length between two specific points on an ECG that are supposed to be at the baseline amplitude, meaning they are not uh, negative or positive. The segments on, the, on an ECG include uh, the PR segment, ST segment, and TP segment. Complex uh, is the combination of multiple waves grouped. So the only main complex on an ECG is the QRS complex. And then point. There is only one point on an ECG termed the J point which is where the QRS complex ends and where the ST segments begins. The main part of an ECG should contain a P wave, QRS complex, and a T wave. Okay, so let me explain to you that. The parts of ECG wave. When the atria are full of blood, the SA node fires and electrical signals spread throughout the atria and then cause them to depolarize. This is represented by the P wave on the ECG and is usually 0.08 to 0.1 seconds or 80 to 100 milliseconds in duration and that is equivalent of 2 to 2.5 small boxes. In a healthy individual, there should be a P wave preceding each QRS complex. Okay, PQ segment. The PQ segment represents the time the signals travel from the SA node to the AV node. Alright, how about QRS complex? The QRS complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles. It appears as a three closely related waves on the ECG, the Q, R, and S waves. Q wave corresponds to the depolarization of the interventricular septum. The R wave is produced by the depolarization of the main mass of the ventricles. And the S wave represents the last phase of ventricular depolarization at the base of the heart. Now, as we know, if there is a depolarization, there should be a repolarization. So, where is the atrial repolarization? So atrial repolarization also occurs during this time. 
but the signal is obscured by the large QRS complex. So you will not see that in the ECG graph. Okay? Now, PR interval. This interval here is the PR interval that begins at the start of the P wave and ends at the beginning of the Q wave. It represents the time taken from the electrical activity to move between the atria and the ventricles, which normally ranging from 0.12 to 0.20 seconds in duration or 3 to 5 small boxes. This interval represents the time between the onset of atrial depolarization and the onset of ventricular depolarization. If the PR interval is greater than 0.20 seconds or greater than 5 small boxes, there is an AV conduction block which is called a first degree heart block. Considering if each impulses from the atria is still able to be conducted into the ventricles. Alright, how about ST segment? This isoelectrical period, ST segment, following the QRS and ending at the beginning of the T wave is the time at which both ventricles are completely depolarized. They are completely relaxed. And in this time, in this ST segment, reflects the plateau and the myocardial action potential. This ST segment is very important in the diagnosis of ventricular ischemia or hypoxia because under those conditions or under those circumstances, the ST segment can be become either depressed or elevated. And it is really essential in diagnosing myocardial infarction. Alright, now the T wave. T wave represents ventricular repolarization immediately before ventricular relaxation or ventricular diastole. It appears as a small wave after the QRS complex. Sometimes a small positive U wave may be seen here following the T wave. This wave represents the last remnants of ventricular repolarization. Inverted T waves or uh, Prominent U waves indicate underlying pathology or conditions affecting repolarization. That in case of hyperkalemia, hypercalcemia. Okay. Now, RR interval. The RR interval begins at the peak of one R wave and ends at the peak of the next R wave. It represents the time between two QRS complexes. And the last interval is the QT interval. QT interval begins at the start of the QRS complex and finishes at the end of the T wave. It represents the time taken for the ventricles to depolarize and then repolarize. This interval can range from 0.20 to 0.40 seconds depending upon the heart rate. So that is equivalent of approximately 5 to 10 small boxes. That's it for this video. We will continue our lesson on the next video. Thank you.